beginning with the latest political bombshell awaiting President Trump when his plane touches down in Washington later tonight. New questions about son-in-law Jared Kushner and Kushner's alleged plan to set up back-channel communications with the Russian government. This latest controversy looming as the president and first lady wrapped up their nine-day international trip, walking there hand-in-hand across the tarmac in Sicily to Air Force One. President Trump calling the trip a, quote, home run in his final remarks to U.S. military at the Naval Air Station Sigonella. ABC's David Wright starting us off tonight at the White House. Tonight, ABC News has confirmed President Trump's son-in-law, Jared Kushner, did try to establish a back channel with Russian officials during the transition, according to sources. But sources insist Kushner's effort was focused on the U.S. response to Syria and other policy matters. An initial meeting took place in December at Trump Tower, according to sources. Kushner sat down with retired Lieutenant General Mike Flynn and Russian Ambassador Sergei Kislyak. These new details may help to explain why Kushner has come under scrutiny by FBI investigators who are looking into Russian meddling in the election and possible collusion by Trump associates. Today, the president's national security advisor pushed back on any suggestion that Kushner's dialogue with the Russians was anything out of the ordinary. No, I, I mean, we have back channel communications with, in a number of, with a number of countries. So, uh, so generally speaking, about back channel communications, what that allows you to do is to communicate in a discreet manner. But that's not how the former CIA director sees it. This is off, off the map, Michael. I know of no other experience like this in, in our history, certainly within my life experience. Mike Flynn, who attended that initial meeting, was ultimately fired as national security advisor for his subsequent interactions with that same Russian ambassador and his lying to White House officials about it. I asked for his resignation. He respectfully gave it. That was after the FBI exposed Flynn lied to the vice president about what he and the Russian ambassador discussed. It's important to note that during his initial meetings with the Russians, Kushner was a private citizen with no official role in government and no security clearance. He was a trusted advisor to his father-in-law. Stand up, Jared. Say hello to the crowd. Come on, Jared. Jared is a very, very successful real estate man in New York. I'm proud of Jared. But about the time Kushner was meeting with Kislyak, Trump was still mulling over what role to give him in the administration. I'd love to have Jared helping us on deals with other nations and see if we can do peace in the Middle East and other things. He's very talented. He's a very talented guy. The president always quick to praise his son-in-law. David Wright joins us live now from the White House. And David, tonight some other Trump family members are in the news for meeting with GOP leaders to discuss strategy? That's right. Sources tell us that the president's eldest two sons, Don Jr. and Eric, held a two-hour strategy session here in Washington on Thursday at the Republican National Committee headquarters. Uh, those sons, of course, are running the family business, but they were here to discuss broad political strategy going forward. Tom? All the Trump staying in politics there. All right, David, thanks so much. The president on his way home at this hour, seen here with fellow world leaders at the G7 summit on the last leg of that trip. President Trump at turns statesman and disruptor through a kaleidoscope of countries. ABC senior White House correspondent Cecilia Vega has been traveling with the president every step of the way. The president visiting U.S. service members at a naval air station in Sicily for his final stop after five countries and nine days. I've got to get the lipstick off, is it off? The president was in a celebratory mood despite that political crisis back home. And I'm trying to figure out who's in that helicopter that's coming in. It may be Justin from Canada. He's calling the trip a success. I think we hit a home run no matter where we are. But some other world leaders in those G7 meetings came to a different conclusion. The U.S. was the lone holdout in a united front on climate change, not signing on to a declaration of strong commitment to the 2015 Paris Climate Agreement, even after several days of behind-the-scenes lobbying and a personal appeal from the Pope, the White House says the president's views are still evolving. He says he'll make his final decision next week. Germany's Chancellor Angela Merkel calling the discussion, quote, very dissatisfying. 
President Trump, the only G7 leader to not hold a post-summit press conference. Instead, he gave a greatest hits list to those service members. Money is actually starting to pour into NATO from countries that would not have been doing what they're doing now had I not been elected. I can tell you that. From that historic landing in Saudi Arabia, the birthplace of Islam, to his visit to the Western Wall, that meeting at the Vatican with Pope Francis, President Trump may be riding high now, until, that is, he is back in Washington tonight, where he lands in the middle of a political firestorm. And all of these allegations about Russia have the White House considering a change in strategy. They are now looking at creating a rapid response team to push back, and Tom, they may be holding fewer press briefings. He will have a lot to deal with when he lands. All right, Cecilia, thank you. And we'll have more on all of this tomorrow on This Week. Martha Raddatz goes 